before electing to have surgery to repair that partially torn meniscus. He missed 11 games. He is not in the starting lineup, but Roy Williams assured us you will see Cole Anthony today as we are underway in Chapel Hill. It's the Tar Heels who start with the ball. Now, Cole Anthony aside, Jordan, this Tar Heels team, it took a while for them to get to this point. They've looked really good, and they've done it by going inside and right on cue. Baycott delivers. Locked in early. The Tar Heels want to dominate a smallish and not deep front line of Boston College right out of the gates. They make a statement. These Eagles starting five, starting together for the tenth time. They're five and four in those games. Freshman C.J. Felder fading away, and he knocks it down. This Carolina lineup, back-to-back -back wins. NC State and Miami convincing wins. We saw the first possession they go inside. What have you liked most from the Tar Heels in the last two victories? They've been very decisive. They've understood their identity, which is run, rebound, and score inside the painted area. Tapped around, falls to Brooks. Second effort is good. Jim Christian, Boston College's head coach, is a basketball coach. He doesn't want to be coaching volleyball this evening. If so, that is advantage Tar Heels. Thorin fires a three, rolls around, no good. Inside to Garrison Brooks again, goes right up with it, leaves it short. Again, follows it and steps it down. Garrison Brooks. I tell you what, Cole Anthony hasn't even stepped on the floor yet, and he's had an impact. This crowd has showed up. They've got that juice. There's a buzz, and you're seeing an animated effort from this UNC team. North Carolina ball. Jay Heath lost the handle. Coming off a double-double, 25-11 and 11 versus NC State. Garrison Brooks picking up where he left off, and he's fully aware reinforcements are on the way with his teammate Cole Anthony back. Inspired ball out of the gates. You look at what Garrison Brooks has done against the ACC. He has been a man possessed. Near 19 points a game, averaging a double double. Boston College has tried to counter the size by subbing in Nick Popovich, the senior at six foot eleven, to Mark Brooks. They go right back to Brooks. Baycott on the second effort. Man, North Carolina getting everything they want on the offensive glass right now. Here's the freshman, Jay Heath. Drives the lane, puts it up and in for two. They're going to need that from Jay Heath, a guy who does a lot of work beyond the arc. His probing dribbles. He's one of their big sh shot hunters. He's got to put some into it this afternoon. Brooks decides to let it fly no good. Boston College started this ACC season 3-1. and one. Since then, they've lost five of six in conference. What will it take to get a win on the road tonight, Jordan? Take a whole lot of spacing you out. You're going to need to make shots. BC is going to have to try to force some turnovers. It's where they thrive, especially in conference, turning their opponent over nearly 14 times. they got to generate some easy stuff. Play Tech in trouble. Passes off. It'll stay with North Carolina. Our Roy Williams told us, you won't see Cole Anthony for all 40 minutes. He stayed true to his word, but he promised we will see him tonight. 17th year head coach of North Carolina. A win tonight would mark his 200th regular season ACC win. And there is no formula. It, it's feel for what they're going to see from Cole Anthony, and that will determine his minutes and how long he plays. Shot clock winding down, three off the mark. Step back three, and it falls in the iron very kind for Jared Hamilton in BC. Takes its first lead of the night. Inside, Armando Baycott up and under, can't get the finish. 
Looking for Jared Hamilton again, but it was poked away. Baycott stayed under the rim. Denied, but a foul. Unforced errors from Boston College. Can't have it. Need more of plays like these in the half-court setting. A lucky lefty. Part two of the Hamilton Brothers Order only at Zaxby's. We are on Cole Anthony watch told he will play but still in his warm-ups on the bench without him when he went down They went two and seven including six straight ACC losses But since then they've won two straight started to play North Carolina basketball once again And that's very important look Cole Anthony without a doubt is one of the best players in the country and a lot of excitement in this building And from us to see him get back on the floor. It's great for the game. It's great for the young man but the story should be for UNC to win this game, what Baycott and Brooks do in the interior versus this thin BC front line. Now, Baycott and Brooks have all eight of the Tar Heels points to start this game. They only made two threes in that win on the road against NC State. It is tough to make two threes in this modern game and win by 10 in conference on the road. Yeah, and BC having some success. And here we go. The wait is over. After missing 11 games, Cole Anthony back in the Ding Dong. Jordan, externally, a lot of debate. Will he come back? Will he just go to the NBA draft? Internally, there was no debate. He wanted to come back. And here he is. Let me tell you, it takes a lot to get these fans on their feet in this building. It doesn't happen a lot. The fans got on their feet, everyone in this building, when Cole Anthony's name was called to come into this game. Everybody had their eyes on Anthony. Brandon Robinson slams it home. Inspired ball. They've just got an extra, extra oomph to them because their star has returned. This is dialed in as I've seen Carolina out of the gates of any game. A travel on Steph Mitchell. Fourth turnover early from Boston College. And Brooks has such a good feel on the interior. He's not a guy that just if it goes down low, he's looking to score it. Robinson moving without the basketball rewarded there and an eager passer in Brooks. Brooks lost the handle that time. Thornton on the drive, dished it off to Hamilton, who had it ripped away from him. That's now five BC turnovers early. BC having success from the field, just completely taking themselves out of it with turnovers. Anthony a three. But an offensive rebound, another one tracked down by Baycott. And a foul called on the Eagles. Baycott is working on the backboard, most especially on the offensive side. When I talk about the Tar Heels being locked in, I look at the 6'10 freshman who's really leading the charge in that regard. And of course, Garrison Brooks setting the tone like he always does. Cole Anthony, as expected, shaking off that rust. First game action in 11 games after that partially torn meniscus. Little miscommunication there between Anthony and Brooks. And you know what that is, Jay? Two guys that haven't played together yep. very much in the last seven weeks because of the injury with Cole Anthony. Feeling their way as they go here on the floor. Jay, he contested three. No good. UNC's going to look to run. BC better get back. Anthony goes to coast, and he's fouled on his way to the rim. That's what cannot happen for BC. That is where this game can be lost. Yes, in the interior, but in the open floor. Nobody commits to Anthony, and when he has momentum, gets a defender on the hip, his offensive savviness is going to draw a whistle. Big ovation.
passion for Cole Anthony. You know, he captivated everybody with that 34-point performance in his debut. It was so good through nine games, 19 points a game. It's just been the longing, the waiting. And now everybody's starting to believe again. You combine Cole Anthony's return with his two-game winning streak, North Carolina's on, and the belief and the buzz is back in the Dean, Do Dean Dome. BC, no points in the last two and a half minutes, trying to get something going offensively. Popovich couldn't handle it. That's now five turnovers in the last couple of minutes for BC. Anthony in traffic, blocked away by CJ Felder. How about the effort from Brandon Robinson on a loose ball? When I talk about locked in, the effort coming from UNC, not just on the backboard and in the trenches, but defensively as well. Brooks has to get rid of it and finally poked away by Popovich, just held it too long. Brooks has been careless with the basketball here on a few sequences that are really hurting his team. Open three and Jared Hamilton drills it. His second triple, he's made North Carolina pay. That's where BC can climb back into this. Generating turnovers. Cole Anthony showing off the handles. Gets it back. No good. Everything but the finish from Cole Anthony on that possession. Jay Heath has a heck of an assignment defensively on Cole Anthony, especially with the buzz in this building. Oh, no, that's not what you want. Don't finish the play is what Jay Heath hopes because that makes it on the highlights on the ACC network, on ESPN. Boys in the locker room are dogging you. Very lucky that that pass was distributed. Tough pass into Felder. 15 seconds on the shot clock for Boston College. Jared Hamilton trying to make something out of nothing. That's an air ball. And an offensive foul against North Carolina. Tar Heels up by two. Cole Anthony back on the court. Some of these other plays, that's just a rhythm and it lacking between him and Brooks who haven't played much together. Brooks put him in a tough spot on that catch. You didn't see it, but put him in a position where it's hard for him to offer it up. But what you are seeing is a Carolina team that has a distinct game plan. It's a small front line of BC, dominate down low, with Cole Anthony coming back and fitting in. Some of the hoopla has got them away from what they need to be doing to build a lead here. And that's why they only lead by two points eight minutes into the game. He's Jordan Cornette. I'm Jay Alter. You said a two-point lead for Carolina. For Boston College, they're shooting 50%, four of eight. The problem is they can't take control of the basketball. And one there, C.J. Felder. Count the bucket plus the foul. Six turnovers for the Eagles. But what, what's Justin Pierce doing defensively right there? I mean, there's just... No man's land. How do you let C.J. Felder be that wide open at ground zero? And then you're going to foul, not hard enough to take away a three-point play opportunity. Can't convert the and one. North Carolina, only one of their last eight from the field. Got to get back to bully ball. The Jim Christian, his team has committed six turnovers. He's in his sixth year, but yet... They're on the road against North Carolina, and they're tied at 12th right in this game. And they need to continue to manage tempo. They don't want this to be a track meet. They want to continue to force Carolina's perimeter to take tough shots and not get back to establishing the inside. All these things play to BC's favor. Cole Anthony, shot clock winding down. Step back three off the mark. And a foul on the rebound. 
Do you get the sense he's trying to press? I mean, Cole Anthony is a volume shooter. He's a scoring guard. He's talented enough where Tar Heels fans and the team will live with those shots because the percentage is in their favor. But yet still, BC remains small in the interior. Harrison Brooks needs to be dominant along with Armando Baycott, much like they were in the first few minutes. That's how they started this game. That's how they've won the last two games against Miami and NC State. They have just pounded it inside and found success. Side to Brooks, trying to get something going. Muscling his way up, off the mark. North Carolina now just one of their last 11, completely out of rhythm. And Jay Heath, easy layup on the other end. Oh, Anthony not in a stance ready to guard right there. Some of that is very indicative of rust and conditioning. Pull up pop for Keeling, no good. Got away from low post touches. Where, where's the high low basketball? Bacon Brooks. Rich Wayne, nobody home. And it falls to Cole Anthony. One on two goes right into the teeth of Boston College and draws the foul. And that's where the advantage will always be half for Cole. But going back defensively, I mean, he is upright. Jay Heath is a scorer, low center of gravity and explosive. Allows him to attack that closeout with relative ease. Let's go, Cole. Nothing but net every Sunday our weekly basketball studio show right here on the ACC Network. Special time tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Also on the ESPN app, I'm sure they'll be talking about the big Duke and Syracuse game that's coming your way 8 o'clock on ESPN and Louisville taking care of business on the road against NC State. Cole Anthony, four points, all four have come from the foul line. And in the open floor, he's gonna draw that whistle. He thrives in those scenarios. I'm Jay Heath. I'm attacking Cole Anthony, the defender. Let's see where he's at. Blows right by him there. Can't get the finish, but there the cleanup to spill, Nick Popovich. And because you beat Anthony, it allows for a drive and a pristine offensive rebounding opportunity for Popovich. Nikki Black steps into that one. And it rolls in. Answers right back. Leaky Black with his first basket of the night. BC needs to explore opportunities. Heath versus Anthony. Great success early. Can't get away from that. I mean, that's another blow by. He Heath just lost the ball that time. Basket. And he can get anywhere he wants on the floor at this point. I mean, this is just ISO ball, hesitation, blow by. And because he gets Bay caught up in the air, Popovich inserts in, put back. Anthony returns the favor, splits defenders, can't get the basket, but again, two shots coming. So shifty watching Cole Anthony play. The rust is not there in that regard. He can get you stood up, get you up in the air. He's going to earn that whistle and convert from the free throw line. And he's done so tonight. Five for five from the foul line. It's going to take time, obviously. Tar Heels fans, they don't want to be patient, especially at this point in the season, but they have to. If you're Cole Anthony, though, do you think about, yeah, I know you want to shake off the rust, but for the betterment of the team, they've had their most success going inside to Baycott and Brooks. But Anthony checks out of the game. Listen, they appreciate it, these fans. What I'm not going to do, Jay, is get ahead of Cole Anthony. I tried that at the beginning of the season, like a lot of experts trying to speculate why come back. His love of the game is why he's here. He's not projecting anything else, tournament, getting back at a certain level. He just wants to play ball. Hoopers want to hoop. And I think that's a great sign to anybody out there questioning what kind of teammate, what kind of guy he is as we take a look at the drive from Thornton. 
He's outside. Of, oh, that is a charge without question. Thornton out of control. You're outside of the window. Keeling taking that charge. I don't know how that's a block. Roy Williams can't believe it. But going back to Cole Anthony and that speculation, the belief that he'd sit out, I think he dispelled all those myths and, and bogus claims that he didn't get along with teammates. These guys love him here, so happy for him to be back, and quite a statement he made to come back and try and help this team and try and keep them thinking postseason at 500 where they stand right now. In it out of the hands of Justin Pierce. It's now five turnovers for North Carolina. Chris Herron Jr. into the game, shoots, comes up empty. Inside looking for Baycott, Popovich read it the whole way, spins past North Carolina, it was three on one, and yet the Eagles give it away. Nine turnovers for Boston College leads to a three no good offensive rebound Keeling's there to collect it. Neither team taking care of the basket. Shooting better than 50% in the first half. They've done that the last three games, only shooting 26% from the field so far tonight. There was such a concerted effort in those halves of 50% from the field or better to go inside. UNC started this game in that manner, and then when Cole Anthony came in, they got away from that focus. They got caught up in the hoopla of their star returning, and that's where the field goal percentage started to dip. And that's not just on Cole Anthony. That's on the bigs. Demand that basketball. Make your presence felt, and then you start to see that productivity return. Anthony not on the floor right now for the Tar Heels. And you're right, Jordan. Baycott and Brooks combined for the first eight points of the night. Boston College has shot their way back into this game and now lead by three after that Steph Mitchell triple. But an instant response from Andrew Playtech. <laughs> Foul called. We mentioned that Brooks and Bacon at the first eight points of this game. Both of them are stuck on eight points, have not scored since that strong start. Yeah, and Bacon is gassed defensively. Mitchell had him out at the three-point line. The closeout was very slow from Bacon, which ultimately got the lefty to bang down a three. And then on the outside, there was another blow by in this possession. So Mitchell looks to have a favorable matchup versus Baycott because of his versatility as an offensive performer. Well, Brooks back on the floor now after a couple of minutes on the bench. C.J. Felder and a foul reach in from Leaky Black with the shot clock at seven. That's his second foul and now Boston College shooting one and one the rest of the way. And, and Coach Williams is upset because you don't need it. Felder is no threat going between his legs. He's so far the from the basket. That's far from the basket. Let him try to make a move that will inevitably probably result in a turnover. This is the front end of the one and one. Leaky Black back running the one like he has with Cole Anthony's absence. North Carolina still can't make it 3 0 for 5 from deep tonight. Right here, you got to get that's where you get Baycott to touch on the angle. Play Tech missed an opportunity. Robinson may have one. Great pass. Baycott too strong, no good. Hamilton takes it all the way himself, slapped out of bounds, stays with the Eagles. The credit Jim Christian's team on the road, as you said, 
palpable buzz with Cole Anthony back for the first time in 11 games as he returns to the court. They weathered that storm. They weathered the crowd. And now the crowd's kind of been taken out of this game because of Boston College, their ability to make shots and take a lead. And despondent BC fans may be saying, well, we hung with Louisville in the first half, and then it opened up. Well, no, Louisville can score 80-plus per game. Carolina's not that kind of team, and the score is trending favorably for a BC team. Off-balance shot doesn't fall from Jarius Hamilton. Here's Cole Anthony. Threads the needle to Garrison Brooks. Can't get the finish, though. Brooks and Baycott still at that eight number that they started the game with. And a three on the other end. Jarius Hamilton drills it. Largest lead of the night for Boston College. Foul called off the ball. And, and this is the second time where there's been a lack of communication. I mean, you've got two guys on one. Leakey's trying to find his guy, goes left. And Jarius Hamilton, who's averaging 16-plus in his last three games, left wide open for three. We saw Pierce get lost in one sequence. Now Black, and it's costed the Tar Heels. Baycott makes the front end of the one-and-one. Now they've listened to you, Jordan. North Carolina, they've made a concerted effort to go back inside Baycott and Brooks getting looks, just not cashing in on them. Yeah, and the, the delivery came a little bit too far out than what I would have liked. They caught on his catch a few sequences before. Power dribble go to the rim. Don't just settle for the short jumper, much like Brooks had as well. Here's Jay Heath working on Anthony. Escapes him, fires, and hits. Jay Heath has dominated that matchup so far tonight. I mean, Cole Anthony can't keep up with him. You expect him to be a step slower. Uh, being in condition and being in game shape are two different things. Charge called on Cole Anthony going the other way. Cole thinks he's in the circle. We'll get another look. Definitely not. Definite charge. Was he moving, though? You say no? I don't think so. Six points for Cole Anthony, all from the foul line. That's his second foul. Offensive foul, moving screen is a call. Not a doubt. There's moving. <laughs> you get in this. You get in the path and move the defender off. And defenders always say, "But my hands are up." Well, you're still with your body <laughs> initiating contact, right. taking Cole Anthony away from his path. That's a standard whistle. Robinson stays with it. Picked up his dribble, has to get rid of it, finds Garrison Brooks. Back to Robinson for a three. In and out. Jay Heath, he needs to want this one. Charge called. He thought he found a Jarius Hamilton wide open in the corner. But three freshman guard Jay Heath for the Eagles is a competent performer. Can get to spots on the floor and have success attacking closeouts, most especially. The assignment has been Cole Anthony's at times, and Jay Heath has exploited that to get wherever he wants. Cole Anthony conditioned, yes, but game shape an entirely different beast. Jay Heath taking full advantage. Cole Anthony's return, but it's Jay Heath who has feasted on that matchup. And in terms of ACC freshman, he's among the best. And he's led this Boston College team. Jim Christian saying, we go as Heath goes. In the games we've won, he's been terrific. In the games we've lost, he's looked like a freshman. And you can throw Derek Thornton in there as well. The guard play from the Eagles is paramount because they get so little from the interior. 
North Carolina, three of their last 20 field goals. They have not made a basket in nearly four minutes. Trying to change that on this three, and they do! Brandon Robinson buries it. Much needed triple for this Tar Heels team. And it's simple. Bo Anthony's gonna attract defensive attention, make yourself available in places to score. And Anthony got his hand in that one, causing the turnover. Brooks was wide open, but couldn't handle it cleanly. What, what kind of screening set, setup is that for Baycott? That's no anger. They get it to Baycott, and he takes it to the rack for two. We'll step aside for 30. Anthony J, that's the story. The defensive pressure and attention he gets allows players to be able to score. Brandon Robinson gets a three. Then again here. I didn't want the screening angle on the ball screen from Baycott. But two defenders just blitz Cole Anthony. A willing passer, a very skilled passer, finds his teammates in positions to win. For Boston College in this first half, the Eagles have 12 temp turnovers and only 10 made baskets. Hard to find a rhythm. Typically not a good sign, and yet they have the lead on the road in the Dean Dome, thanks to Nick Popovich. You gotta be thinking, we value the basketball. The kind of lead you could build here on the road. Now with, with those numbers in conference on the road, this team would typically be down double digits instead, leading by one with a little more than two minutes to play in this first half. Robinson created space, left it short. Ball bounces back to North Carolina, though. Tar Heels back in front. We talk about the return of Cole Anthony. How about Jeremiah Francis? Back from being out the last two games with that nagging knee injury. He's been in and out of this Tar Heels lineup. But his first touch of the game leads to two points. Thornton in traffic, stays with it, can't connect. Feels like a possession, you get it down low to Brooks. Well, they read your mind, but so did Nick Popovich. Transition three, it's good, count it, plus the foul. Comedy of errors there from the Tar Heels. Jared Hamilton knocks down his third three of the night, and he has a chance to make it a four-point play. And you just got Jer Jeremiah Francis running back to the goal, not coming out to the defender. A little too late, overzealous with the effort, causes a four-point play opportunity for BC here. Jared Hamilton, the senior, the older brother of Jarius Hamilton, steps to the line. Leading scorer today for Boston College. And Jarius, who's really been the story for this team as of late. Jared, the elder of the Hamilton brothers, the story here in the first stanza. Ten points. And he completes the four-point play. Eagles lead by three. Inside to Brooks. Robinson takes it inside, puts it up, off the mark. Back to Hamilton, contested three, why not? Almost banks in, but goes begging. Confidence reasons you want to get a basket here for the Tar Heels. We remind you, doubleheader at Women's Basketball Thursday right here on the ACC Network. Starts at 6 Eastern, North Carolina and Duke, and then number five, Louisville, taking on number 14, Florida State. Both games on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. How about the Louisville women? Perfect 10 and 0 in ACC play, 13 straight wins. They love their basketball, the men and women's side down there in Louisville.
for good reason. The Yum Center had a good product on the floor. Coming out of his Roy Williams timeout, what kind of possession do you want for the target? It's going to be a low post touch. It has to be a low post touch. It's going to be some formula of Baycott or Brooks here to get back to how they started this game and finding that that dominance that is so clearly there that they got away from. And because of the fight from these Eagles down low and because of UNC's getting away from it, the Eagles have all the momentum at this point in this game. The same amount of made baskets that they have turnovers, Boston College, and yet on the road, leading by three into Baycott. Splitting defenders, finds play tech, up, and he's fouled. Junior heads to the line for two. Baycott as a facilitator, vastly underrated. Seven assists in that Miami throttling. And once again here, make it a play by passing. That one rolls in for the junior. Playtech shooting a hair under 60% from the foul line. impressive line right there. That's the kind of Baycott you'd love to get on a nightly basis. He has that type of potential. As a first round draft pick when he puts it all together. Shot clock is off for Boston College. They will in all likelihood take in a halftime lead looking to add to the two point lead. Thornton, step back jumper, no good. North Carolina has time. Two seconds, a heave. And Cole Anthony's return through 20 minutes. The Tar Heels trailing by two to Jim Christian in Boston College. It's a simple game. You make threes. You give yourself a chance. That's what Boston College has done. BC has come in here willing to fight. They have not been dominated on the inside. So I would have expected Carolina to come out and establish themselves. And also, the but there's some rust involved. Harrison Brooks needs to stay locked in. Out of the gates in the first five minutes, took six shots. The remainder of that half, when Cole Anthony came back in, he took two shots and didn't connect on either. And that's been the story kind of for this season with Garrison Brooks playing alongside Cole Anthony. And he's got to be a guy that says, hey, the advantage is down low. Let's get it done. Expect more of that in the second half of the Tar Heels. Mitchell steps into a shot to open the second half, goes begging. You mentioned that great stat on Garrison Brooks. He started this game like the man we saw Monday night. 25 points, 11 rebounds in that win at NC State. But since Cole Anthony entered the game, only two shots. He missed them both. C.J. Felder knocks that one down for the Eagles to go up four. And both teams need to tighten in terms of turnovers. Giveaways are happening too much in the first half. They need to be limited here in the second. Inside the Baycott turns, attacks the rim, no good. Derek Thornton, the blow by, kick out three, off the mark. Harrison Brooks has an advantage down low with Thornton. Calling for the ball, they don't give it to him. Mitchell recovers. Now Garrison Brooks has it. Trying to get back in rhythm, muscling his way to the rim. Second effort. No good, but he's fouled, and we'll get two at the line. Good things happen when Brooks gets a touch early on in a possession down on the low block. It's either going to draw a whistle, he's either going to convert, or it's going to allow a putback from Baycott or somebody else. The great spacing here, allowing him to operate with patience and ultimately get to the line. And if there was no whistle, Baycott would have a dunk finish as a putback. Rattles in and out. Next Saturday, noon Eastern time right here on ACC Network. Florida State taking on Miami. Start your college basketball Saturday right here at the ACC with a great matchup between Miami and Florida State. That was a great game the first time those two teams met. The Seminoles won it in overtime. AC leading by four on the road. Hamilton. Curls it in, a little spin from the sophomore, and it's the largest lead of the night. Eagles up six. BC getting driving lanes whenever they want them. 
Looking for that immediate answer. No good from Leaky Black. Felder left it short. Brooks backing down Felder again. Fouled. Count it. And that's it. Don't get bored with it. Garrison Brooks is an absolute star. He's a first-team all-conference performer. What I've marveled at every time I've had the ability to see him live. Get him involved. Play on his side and let him play versus Felder, a 6'7 freshman. That's advantage Brooks every time. Now we said it, headed into the second half with Cole Anthony off the floor to start this game. They went inside. They were really effective to open this game up. He comes into the game. They don't go inside as much. They lose that identity. And now to start the second half, they're going right back in. And let me put that in perspective. In the nine games that Cole Anthony played, there was only three times that the big fella Garrison Brooks took 10 or more shots. Every game with Anthony out, he hit 10 at least or more. How about Jay Heath, the freshman phenom, drills another triple. Now a seven-point lead for Boston College. All that buzz we talked about with Cole Anthony coming back has been sucked out of the Dean Dome right now. Another offensive rebound for the Tar Heels, though. Doesn't leave the points. Thornton lost the handle. Foul called in transition. Jay Heath is a confident performer, arguably the best scorer alongside Thornton on this team. Takes the handoff, play tech goes under. And you can't do that for a guy who shoots 38% and had himself a solid first half. He's feeling himself. You gotta get over the top of that screen to contest or maybe even deny the, the path to make him retreat back. For North Carolina, they have dominated the glass. 11 offensive rebounds. The problem, though, they've only cashed in for six second-chance points. Looking for Brooks. Finally, they get it to him. Here's the junior. Turns and faces. Now backing down Popovich. Muscling his way to the rim. Not enough on it. Battle for the ball, Brooks. Thought he came up with it instead. They say jump ball. I don't know if Popovich actually had a piece of that ball to justify the jump ball call. It'll stay North Carolina's way because of the possession arrow, though. I don't love how pushed off the block you have Brooks right here. And because of that late execution on where he gets it, the rest of the play breaks down. Has a mismatch, trying to use it. He had Derek Thornton on him. Six inch height advantage, that 45 pound weight advantage, and instead fouled and goes to the foul line to try and get two. And what I'm also most impressed with with Brooks, despite the productivity, he's an Iron Man. And he's playing 37 minutes per game in conference. And when he's that much of a focal point to still be able to defend, rebound, and score it, it's impressive. Rolls in and out. And Boston College has the ball. Baycott called for the whistle. That's his first. Brooks checks out of the game. And he's frustrated. He's frustrated because he hasn't been able to punctuate some of those finishes. He's gotten the whistle, but he wants three-point play opportunities. Greedy with him. You love that from your big fellow. Thornton. Pull up pop. No good.
miscommunication. The steal, Jared Hamilton, the slam. Largest lead of the night for Boston College. They're up to a nine-point advantage. Average nearly nine steals per game. Turn their opponent over in conference 14 times per game. That kickstarts their offense, allows them to build this lead. These aren't forced errors. These are unforced errors, compounded by the fact they're live ball turnovers, a miscommunication. Jared Hamilton, punctuation. Lead on the road in Chapel Hill. Look at the reaction of Jay Heath on that Jared Hamilton slam. This team, they've been through a frustrating season, but they are playing with confidence and playing with love right now. Jay, find you a partner in life that celebrates your wins like that. I know your <laughs> lovely wife does, man. Really cool. I know yours does, too. <laughs> Those two, the one-two punch, 21 combined points out of Boston College is 41. Cole Anthony back into the game, looking for his first basket of force there and a run out for BC. Steph Mitchell fouled. And, and that for Cole Anthony is... What I, I was wondering would occur is a guy who wants to come back in and because he's such an elite talent, wants to change the world with every play. You gotta let it happen within the rhythm of your game. And with the bigs on the floor, you don't have that Brooks Baycott option. So it's gonna be a heavy focus on Anthony. Derek Thornton with Anthony with a hand in his face. Can't get it to go. North Carolina, like they've struggled for most of this season, struggling from three tonight, just one of nine from deep. Wide open look here, passing off. Anthony. It's good! First made basket since the 11 game injury is a three. Brings his crowd back into it. Mitchell's second effort and an instant response from Boston College. up his dribble he's in trouble has to get rid of it and does eight seconds to shoot Brandon Robinson has to hurry decides to launch a deep three quick pass Popovich goaltending the call count the bucket that'll get you a seat on the bench quickly Huffman doesn't move well to begin with but a whole unawareness of Popovich beating him down the floor. And Baycott and Brooks will quickly get the call. On the other side, a friendly bounce. For a friendly face that the Tar Heels are happy to have back on the floor, but finding his rhythm will be a process like you mentioned, Jay. It was naive to think he would come right back, although looking good here. A little miscommunication from Brooks, but another friendly bounce for Garrison Brooks and he heads the line to complete the three-point play. That's the connection that the Tar Heels need to ride moving forward with this second half if they hope to get a home win. Probing dribbles from Anthony, draws the defense because he's playing downhill. And the big call of Garrison Brooks with the finish. It was a nice adjustment from Brooks who didn't go up for it at first. The hesitation kept it in bounds with his left hand. Can't convert the three-point play though. That's the decision-making that Cole Anthony has shown time and time again. Brooks 0 for 6 from the foul line. Contested 3. And Jared Hamilton's had the hot hand, didn't have it there. Anthony, great pass. Robinson, acrobatic, can't get the finish. And another foul underneath. This time it's Armando Baycott controlling the glass. Baycott active on that backboard. Bully ball. 14 offensive rebounds for the Tar Heels. And they got to make these free throws so they have the points to show for it. But you love the activity from your big fella clearing space and earning a position at the line. 
North Carolina started this game 10 for 10 from the foul line since then, including that, just two of their last nine. National Signing Day is Wednesday. The Huddle has you covered for all the ACC recruits. Wednesday, 5.30 Eastern time, right here on the ACC Network. A great crew led by Jordan Cornett. You'll be in studio for that. North Carolina fans, you've got a good one. Mac Brown, he's brought in the five-star defensive end, Desmond Evans. Under Armour All-American that the Tar Heels are really excited about. And a special quarterback in Sam Howell that lit up the country in a conference last season. BC leading by seven. That might have been a walk. Got away with it there. Popovich drawing the double team. Nothing doing. The numbers. Robinson a three. Can't connect. Got a great look, just couldn't knock it down. And a great decision from Baycott to find the shooter in Robinson. Two of 12 from three. That has hampered this team all season, and it's doing so tonight. Jay Heath! Oh, my! The freshman flying to the rim. Count it plus the foul. Jay Heath is fun to watch. Looked like he was going to go one way, change of direction, and saw the defender coming, locked eyes with the defender, then returned those eyes to the goal to play through the contact. I knew we'd be talking about a freshman guard tonight. I just didn't think it'd be the Jay Heath show in Cole Anthony's return. Ten-point lead for Boston College. Anthony for three. He's got it! Cole Anthony knocks down his second triple. for you my friend the Simba of this North Carolina team if you're looking for a Lions King reference they played the song and everyone's lifting their babies oh, life come on man everybody knows the song <laughs> now, right now they're looking for life down seven Cole Anthony a three right before we took a break mouth to the camera I'm back he's got two threes and 12 points step back three Robinson <laughs> Nothing but the bottom of the net. It's only a two foot on the line. <laughs> Anthony almost got to that one. And this crowd has grown into the game. Had a buzz to start. Boston College took them out of it for a large portion of this game. But they're right back in it with North Carolina back within five. Here's the matchup. It's been favorable to Heath. Off to Hamilton, left it way short. Cole Anthony. He'll head to the line again, where he's a perfect six for six tonight. Cole Anthony's allowed the game come to him in these last few sequences of success. Two three-point shots. He allowed his teammates to do the work to get it to him. Here in the push, hesitates, then opportunistic once he saw a gap. It took so long for this North Carolina team to learn how to play without Cole Anthony. They were two and seven in their first nine games without him. They finally found a rhythm, one, two straight. Now you have to learn how to play with him. Absolutely, and, and Cole Anthony uh, has to trust more about the pieces around him in terms of, okay, let me allow them to do some things and the ball will come to me. Baycott. 
a head scratcher. That's his third. It's an absolute head scratcher. 25 feet from the basket. A non three point threat. I love the ball pressure. The crowd's in it, but you still got to think the game. What was a 10 point Boston College lead is down to just three. Here's Jay Heath, freshman, springs to action. Jared Hamilton, way out of control. Anthony thought about it, now off to Baycott. He lost the handle, but was fouled. And again, the proper decision from Cole. Wanted to hit that step back that he's so gifted with, but saw a defense coming at him. Got the ball out of his hands, allowed his teammate to make a play in Baycott. That's the fourth foul called on Derek Thornton. C.J. Felder also has four fouls. As Boston College still 10 minutes left of this second half starts to think about foul trouble. Next Saturday, you can start your college basketball with Miami and number five Florida State. Noon coming to you right here on the ACC Network. How has North Carolina's offense improved in the second half? Well, Cole Anthony knocking down a couple shots has given them another option besides just the interior. Cole has injected life. It's a 9-0 run. Contested step back Jay way off the mark and a foul called. That's just a frustration foul. And there's been a, there's, there's been a few of those on both sides, but this one takes Cole Anthony to the free throw line. And now that's four fouls on Jay Heath. And North Carolina will be shooting the rest of the way. Tenth team foul already on Boston College. <laughs> Cole Anthony, a perfect nine for nine from the foul line and a chance to give the Tar Heels their lead. First lead of this second half. Thornton through traffic. Hamilton steps into it and hits. Much needed bucket. And the senior delivers. Inside to Brooks. Backing down Popovich. Muscling his way to the rim, it falls right off it. It's a heck of a block out for Mitchell to get Baycott pushed off. Popovich dribbles into a double team. Somebody's open. Popovich a three. Oh, how about it? Nick Popovich drills it. All the momentum was with North Carolina. And now Boston College with back-to-back -back baskets. Aaron pass there, falls right to Mitchell. BC's credit, they absorbed the punch and responded back. Those dribble drives have collapsed that defense and allowed for good looking shot opportunities. Hamilton knocks one down. And again, the store doing work. Popovich moving without it. Doesn't shoot a great percentage, but capable from there and knocks down the three point. Thornton steps right into it, knocks it down. Derek Thornton makes it three straight buckets for the Eagles. What a response. Defensively, the perimeter from the Tar Heels is failing time and time again to prevent that initial drive. BC's guards getting wherever they want. 
It's a 7-0 Boston College run. They're trying to take that ball out of Cole Anthony's hands. Calls for it. Triggers the three. Can't hit it. Thornton catches it on the run. Tried to take it all the way himself, and they call a foul. Thought that was just out of bounds instead of foul. Game follows the drama here on Tobacco Road. Roy Williams, UNC team, went on an 11-0 run. Jim Christian's Boston College team immediately answered with a 7-0 run of their own, and it's a six-point Eagles lead. Looking for more here. Corner three blocked. Up the effort from Leaky Black. Anthony took it all the way himself. Floater falls. Defense runs away from Cole Anthony inexplicably. Foul called on the dribble. First made basket in nearly four minutes for the Tar Heels. Much needed. I understand being scared of Cole Anthony, but running away from him while he has the ball is not the answer. Great touch. Feels like he's regained that rhythm, and without question, Cole Anthony has been the difference here in the second half for the Tar Heels. Thornton makes the front end of the one and one. If you're North Carolina, you're shooting worse than 30% from the floor, yet you only find yourself down five. Now six. Boston College, four fouls for Heath and Thornton. Thornton on the floor, Heath is not. Straight to the rack. Leaky Black. Thornton in trouble, passes out of it, finds Jared Hamilton who knocks it down. Jared Hamilton up to 16 points. He leads Boston College in scoring. Robinson a three. Rims out. North Carolina three of 15 from deep. Thornton has a step on Anthony. Tried to use it. Put too much on it. Great pass into Brooks. The extra pass to Robinson. Buries it. Brandon Robinson cuts the lead in half. on the shot clock. A fluid offense on both sides as Thornton's able to thread the needle, splitting the defense and finding Hamilton. But right here, trusting your teammates as Anthony finds Brooks. Brooks kicks it out to Robinson. The best three-point shooter on the team makes him pay. And it all starts with Cole Anthony trusting his guys, delivering it to Brooks, allowing Brooks to get it over ultimately to Robinson. Into Heath, wide open. He'll typically make you pay. That one rimmed out. Offensive rebound, Boston College. Both the guards, the backcourt for the Eagles, have four fouls. If I'm UNC's perimeter, I'm attacking these guys defensively. Five seconds to shoot. Thornton goes into attack mode. He'll get two foul shots, one at the end, one opportunity, though. Keep in mind, with Cole Anthony's ability to draw a whistle with how savvy and shifty he is, it should be no problem for him to either foul out Heath or Thornton, who's ever defending him next time down. Both guys with four fouls. Thornton a perfect five for five from the foul line. You look at the foul trouble, three guys with four fouls, and then Popovich with three. Oh 
Cole Anthony, step back three. Can't connect this time, but perfect position for the follow, Justin Pierce. One possession game. Heath, great pump fake, trying to get it back to Thornton. Off his hands. 15 turnovers for Boston College. Justin Pierce at that three spot has the ability to do things like this. Blitz from the perimeter, a putback. Carolina rebounding to generate offense. I know that North Carolina. Carolina, but the Tar Heels focused on this game, trying to turn Cole Anthony's return into a win. Right now, trailing Boston College by three. The shots have just not fallen, but they've grinded their way into a one possession game. Anthony on the blow by, scoop to the hoop. Cole Anthony has 20 in his return. Thornton, a three, goes begging. Popovich pulls down the offensive rebound and he's immediately tied up with Leaky Black. It'll stay Boston College basketball. Check out this reverse. It's just a decision making. Patient to wait for the defense to allow him that driving lane and rather than dribble it into a double team because that's what he that's what he gets attention wise. He sees a path and, and is explosive to get to. Took him a little while to get going but this is the Cole Anthony Tar Heels fans have expected. Crossover, kick out three, Mitchell can't connect. Thornton's got four fouls. I wouldn't give the ball up. Robinson right to the rim, and it falls in. North Carolina back in front, thanks to Brandon Robinson. Baycott with a head of steam, double team, handed off, count it, plus the foul, Garrison Brooks. I mean, how about this environment, Jay Alter? We got a ball game. Fun finish coming. Team lead changes. Here's the last one, courtesy Garrison Brooks. Yeah, and Scott's got to be drooling at Baycott, his composure to catch that at the elbow, spin away from a double team, deliver to his interior guy in Brooks. He earns a whistle and a basket. The composure of Baycott is what sticks out there in the synergy between the two Carolina bigs. Back and forth affair in the ACC. We've come to expect nothing less. And now Garrison Brooks steps to the line. The junior 0 for 6 from the foul line tonight. Trying to complete his three-point play. Missed it. Battle for the rebound, it's loose. Possession arrow, North Carolina Tar Heels will keep the basketball. It's a winning play from Leaky Black. It's a winning play to get down on the ground, get dirty, get your hands in there without fouling. Give your guys another possession. Cole Anthony had six points of that first half, all from the foul line. In this second half, he started the heat up. 14 second half points, and he has engineered the Carolina comeback. And, and his decision making has been flawless. Four of seven in that second half. One turnover in 22 minutes of play from a guy that gets this kind of defensive attention. Wow. Here's Anthony. With a hand in his face, fouled. He'll head to the line. Decision making once again for Cole Anthony. Had a driving, had a gap to pursue. Saw the defense close in. Watch how he stops. Sees the double coming, doesn't drive into it. Pulls up and draws the foul with the mid range. Seeing what's in front of him. A perfect 11 for 11 from the foul line in his return. Seven week 
Brooks on the sideline with an injury. It's been worth the wait for Tar Heels fans trying to close this game out. Up three with three to go. Thornton, big time bucket. Derek Thornton delivers. And Boston College gets the ball right back. Twelve points for Derek Thornton tonight. Extra pass. Hamilton to three. Rattles in and out. Boston College decides to pull it out. Fifteen seconds to shoot. Trailing by one. Thornton. The former Duke Blue Devil back-to-back -back baskets in Boston College back up by one. Anthony fouled. He'll get another two coming. And th this sequence is a painful one to watch for a Tar Heels team that did so much. Thornton knocks down the jump shot. Just the inbound, a miscommunication there, which ultimately leads to Thornton making a pay from almost the same spot. Right back, that four-point swing is huge. Cole Anthony, an opportunity to take the lead from the foul line. Tied at 67. 13 for 13 from the foul line tonight. Down the stretch, it's been two guards, Cole Anthony and Derek Thornton going punch for punch. Tar Heels lead again. 16 lead changes tonight. It really feels like it's going to come down to Thornton or Anthony. Their decision making with the basketball because they have been ball dominant here down the stretch. to the rim and a blocking call will send Nick Popovich to the line for two I'm saying he was within the arc down there take another look and he jumped two into Popovich could have stayed planted and maybe moved up just an inch and I think he gets that whistle going his way in tied at 68 Jim Christian's team started ACC play three and one since then they've lost five of six trying to steal one on the road here rolls around does not drop 90 seconds left in regulation we're tied at 68 oh, you're gonna gotta be a high ball screen probably oh you're gonna see zone here from BC Look for the gap for Brooks to operate. Mid-post area for Brooks. Cole Anthony in his return. Five on the timer. Deep three. No good. Who do you go to here if you're Boston College? Jared Thornton's going to try and drive this thing and figure it out, find an open teammate. Back to Thornton, and he's fouled on the drive. It's been head down on the catch for Thornton every time, and he's been able to get two feet in that paint and either find a scoring play or a shooter at the, at the, at the three-point line or get a whistle. Here he gets the correct whistle as Brooks which just shoves him out of bounds. Derek Thornton started his college career down the road. A five-star recruit to Duke. Missed it. 
He has one more. He then transferred to USC and now back on the East Coast with Boston College. The weight of this game on his shoulders. Boston College back in front. Again, you're showing a 2-3 zone look here from the Eagles, which again, right at the nail around the ACC logo, needs to be a Carolina big as a receiver to collapse the defense. Anthony driving right into Thornton and catches in. Shot clock is off. Carolina leads by one. Hamilton missed it. And Brandon Robinson is down, clutching at his right ankle. A foul was called on the Jared Hamilton shot. And it was called on Robinson. That's his fifth foul. So he's fouled out of this game. And he is clearly in pain. And this just makes you sick. Watching a Carolina team that's been laden with injury. Hard to see what happened in terms of injury, but in terms of contact, I mean, he, he hit the shooting hand. So you agree with the call? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, you always hate those kind of calls, but without a doubt, he made contact with the shooter. He got him at that release point of that left hand, that dominant hand of the shooter in Hamilton. I hate, hate, hate to see this happen. For Brandon Robinson. And Brandon Robinson helped off the court. He is fouled out of this game. The officials right now are checking to see if Jared Hamilton will be shooting two or three. And they've confirmed the senior will step to the line with three foul shots coming. team a road win in Cole Anthony's return absolutely crushing for it to go down on a questionable foul on a three-point shot that his other angle showed within the arena did not look like a foul and here clear frustration from Cole Anthony who wanted the high ball screen from Brooks and had the advantage ship and make a play of his own official having seen replays that's a tough whistle I did not see foul or contact 
26 points for Cole Anthony in his return, but it ends in a Tar Heels loss. Boston College, their first win against North Carolina in 13 attempts. Derek Thornton, the former Duke Blue Devil. Tonight's Zaxby's player of the game, a road win for Thornton and this Eagles team. Would have liked to see maybe a timeout there from Carolina. You had the timeouts. You have Cole Anthony. I say you call a timeout, you draw something up there. But let's take a look at the controversial play here. Was this a foul from Brandon Robinson on Hamilton? There's, there's contact on the hand. There is contact clearly on the replay. It's the right call. The fans don't like it. There was foul on the shot. The proper call was made. Once again, our final score, Boston College 71, North Carolina 70. ACC basketball, more of it coming your way. For our entire crew, Jordan Kernett, I'm Jay Alter, sending you to Clemson Wake.